Hey guys, what's going on? My name is Adam Everett Miller with AETuts.com, and we started doing quick tips here uh, on the site a while back, but a lot of those are actually kind of legit tutorials, but just shorter, smaller versions of them. So today I'm actually going to just give you a quick tip. That's all it is. No awesome ending effect. Uh, just something that hopefully could maybe uh, speed up your workflow a little bit. So. Uh, here's the product that I was working on. Well, this isn't the actual product I was working on, but uh, this is an example of a product that I might be working on. Um, but I actually was working on a project where I needed to go through a lot of green screen footage. And um, you know that you don't want to have to sift through all that in After Effects just because it's not the most efficient way. So um, bring it into your nonlinear editing system. I'm using Sony Vegas. And that's all I need to say. Um, and uh, so I have, I have a basic rough cut. Okay, this is it. I got my cuts. I got my little crossfades. I actually... I came in into this clip and you know I, I kind of zoomed in a little bit and cr cropped it so that I can kind of do a little jump cut in um, as I'm talking, do crossfade. Now these are MXF files, um, but I also threw in an MOV just so we have it. And then here at the end, it'll be a nice crossfade. Oh, I'm sorry, a nice, nice fade out. So um, I have this edit, but it's not 100% concrete. It's just this is a rough idea. Um, and so what, what, what do I want to do? If you have Adobe Premiere, you can just stop watching this and go make a sandwich because you can have the whole dynamic link between After Effects and have fun. I, I hope you enjoy yourselves. But for those of us who are on Vegas and I think maybe even Final Cut, I'm sure there's ways to go back and forth. Um, and then Avid as well. Um, you know, there, there's this constant frustration with, okay, I have my edit, but I got to render out this clip, bring it over in After Effects, do my effects, and then pop it back in the timeline. Um, you know, you could just render it all out, but you don't want the same background for this clip as for that clip because the, um, you know, the composition's different. So you'd want to change the background accordingly. So you don't just want to key the whole thing, um, but so you want to keep these edit points. Also, um, just having some some just edit points in general, you might you might not this might not might not be the final version. So. Anyways, um, as I'm saving this, the default for Vegas um, is just a VEG file. So, okay, save it. Um, and I can't obviously open that in After Effects, but this is something that I just stumbled upon the other day. You might've known it, you might not. If you come down, you can file and save as. There's this uh, Avid Legacy, it's the same uh, three initials, so I'm not sure, but basically it's this, it's called an AAF file and it's just your core cuts. It's it's like a, what a TXT file is to, you know, any any word processing application can open this. This is just your core meat and potatoes uh, cuts and, and fades. Um, and so if you save it as an AAF file, and I think I'm sure you can do it pretty much in any, uh, any editing system, you can uh, save this. Let me go back to the desktop and save it right in here. Um, save this uh, format. Then when you go into After Effects, you can open it up. Let me go over to this one. Okay. Uh, you can just import this AAF file and it will maybe ask you a question here and give you some warnings. The only reason it's giving you warnings is because um, when you were over here in uh, Vegas, shoot, sorry, hold on. When you were over in Vegas, uh, you know, your crossfades might not be the exact because there's different different ways to do it and all that stuff and and that and that's fine but the basic thing is you you have your edits um okay so the warning popped up then it almost like a photoshop doc you know almost like opening up a psd you have all of your assets here with your mov as well and you have a composition with with all of your cuts in it so this is just super super handy when i stumbled upon this i was like oh save me tons of time because now i can I can do this, but then if, let's say I want to get rid of a certain clip, I can still delete it and, and it just basically doing most of the grunt work in the editing system um, as far as make, when, when to make the cuts for interviews or whatever, um, especially if you maybe have to, yeah, interviews with lower thirds, you can do all your, your core editing there and then just kind of bring it over here into After Effects to add the final um, things like maybe keying out the background or, or um, adding in the titles. Um, but you don't have to sit there and do all that tough editing. And if there is some last minute minor edits, you, you can do it here. What it's going to do is, I'll just drag this up. It's actually going to create a different layer for each, for every audio, you know, for each, uh, each track's audio and then for the video. And you'll notice that even, uh, it even actually has the uh, crossfade. It'll just lower the opacity here. So if you remember, we had a, one crossfade um, right here, it will it'll recognize that over here. It's not, you know, when you start adding other effects, like, I mean, I mean, you say, oh, well, why don't you just key it over 
within Vegas, but Vegas, like most editing systems, don't have the greatest built-in effects. So, um, you know, it recognizes crossfades, and then it'll also, um, you know, remember at the end, I, I fade out, and so it'll it just does the same thing there, and it has it basically just lowers the opacity. Um, and I think with with a fade out, it, it kind of handled it interestingly that it split it split the clip in two. It's, this is the same clip. It's you know two eight L, but then it split it in two just so that it can fade out at that point, um, even though technically these two are the same clip, just starting at 100 and then going down to zero. But um, this is the clip, this is the idea. Now you are you might stumble upon some of these. You have these random little like extra bumps, um, you know, or they're just like little tiny slivers of, of, uh, of a clip left. And I was kind of trying to figure out what that was and what I came up with was just that, I remember I, had, I have some tracker points like edit point one, edit point two. Um, and then also another one that I had discovered was sometimes when you butt clips up together, it like does this automatic like cross fade for one frame, um, and that gave me this uh, that gave me the same thing. Notice I didn't get it in the video, but then I got it in my audio because that's where it it did the little quick uh, fade out. So um, you can just get rid of these because they're not important at all. Um, they just represent where markers would have been uh, or where they were. Um, but yeah, that, that's it. That's the quick tip. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Um, if this helped you at all, then good. If you have any other advice or anything else, I just stumbled upon this and I tried to read, read some information online, but I just figured maybe this would help somebody. And um, yeah, hope to see you soon. Bye.